Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 21st of November. One soldier, three militants killed in separate encounters in Indian Kashmir. Pakistan's Finance Minister Ishaq Dar declared absconder in corruption case. And joint US-Afghan airstrikes target Taliban's opium factories in Afghanistan. And now for all the details, three Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba militants were killed in an encounter in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province on Tuesday morning. Meanwhile, in another encounter in Kupwana district of the province, a soldier was killed on Tuesday evening. The encounter was still underway till the last reports came in. Security forces on Tuesday killed three militants of Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba or LET in an encounter in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province. Acting on specific inputs, the army launched a search operation in Handwara town of the province during midnight. The militants who were hiding inside a house opened fire and the encounter ensued. A huge cache of arms and ammunition were also recovered from the possession of the militants. As per drill, the terrorists were asked to come out and surrender, but they preferred to open up and they fired on the search parties. The fire was retaliated and the encounter continued for about one, one hour or one and a half hour. And uh, three unidentified, three unidentified Pakistani militants uh, affiliated with Lashkar Toiba was eliminated. The encounter comes two days after five militants were killed in a similar gun battle in Bandipura district of the province. India accuses Pakistan of training and arming militants and helping them infiltrate across the border that divides Kashmir. Pakistan denies those allegations. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Finance Minister Ishaq Dar was declared an absconder in a corruption reference by an accountability court in Islamabad on Tuesday. The court said steps will be taken to declare the minister a proclaimed offender within 10 days for failing to appear before it in the case. An accountability court on Tuesday declared Pakistan's finance minister Ishak Dar an absconder in a corruption reference filed against him by the National Accountability Bureau. Dar failed to appear before the court as two witnesses appeared to record their statements on Tuesday. Dar's lawyer presented a medical report stating he is currently in London for heart treatment. The National Accountability Bureau, however, raised objections concerning Dar's medical reports. The court later declared Dar an absconder and said steps will be taken to declare the minister a proclaimed offender within 10 days. The next hearing in the case is scheduled to be held on December 4th. Moving on, poor educational infrastructure and lack of job opportunities have fueled a sense of deprivation among the youth in illegally occupied region of Gilgit Baltistan. Locals allege that it is a part of Pakistan government's agenda to keep the region underdeveloped. The persisting condition of poor educational infrastructure in Gilgit Baltistan has created a worrisome environment for the youth of the region. The socio-economic development of the illegally occupied region has become stagnant as a result. Locals allege absence of universities offering specialized courses has made the youth incapable of building a secure future. लेकिन यहाँ के यूथ के लिए इश्यूज ये हैं नंबर वन जो हमारे स्टूडेंट्स यहाँ से मेडिकल में जो डिग्री करना चाहते हैं वहाँ पे लिमिटेड हमारे पास सीटें हैं पूरे पाकिस्तान में यहाँ पे इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेजेस नहीं होने की वजह से मेडिकल कॉलेजेस नहीं होने की वजह से सैकड़ों हमारे हुनरमंद तलबा जो टैलेंटेड हैं वो मेडिकल कोई अच्छी यूनिवर्सिटी से अच्छी डिग्री हासिल नहीं कर सकते विद द फॉलोइंग एजुकेशन स्टैंडर्ड द डिसमल कंडीशन इज फ्यूलिंग अंस ऑफ डेप्रोवेशन अमंग द रेजिडेंस ऑफ द रीजन विच वॉज इलीगली ऑक्यूपाइड बाई पाकिस्तान डेकेज अगो जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटीज़ वर्ल्ड चैलेंज है पाकिस्तान में ये नंबर वन पे है क्योंकि हमारे मैक्रो इकनॉमिक्स 
जो इश्यूज़ हैं वो अभी तक फेडरल गवर्नमेंट और इसके अलावा हमारे प्रोविंशल गवर्नमेंट गिलगित बल्तिस्तान में फोकस नहीं कर रही यहाँ पे कोई इंडस्ट्रीज नहीं है ना कोई फैक्ट्री लग रही है People of Gilgit Baltistan have been waiting for years now for a better administration that could work for their development. However, the corruption and ignorance in the system has become a major challenge for the growth of the region, leaving the future of youth in dark. In news from Afghanistan, commander of the US forces in Afghanistan, General John Nicholson, on Monday said a well-planned raid against a drug-producing facilities was carried out in Afghanistan's Helmand province on Sunday. He alleged opium trade fuels Taliban's war machine in the country and the US forces will continue such operations. U.S. and Afghan forces have launched joint attacks on Taliban opium factories to try to curb the insurgent group's economic lifeline, the commander of U.S. forces in Afghanistan said on Monday. U.S. Army General John Nicholson showed videos at a press conference of targeted aerial strikes conducted on Sunday against what he described as Taliban drug factories in Afghanistan's Helmand province. He was speaking via satellite from his headquarters in Kabul to reporters based in Washington. To some extent, it's fair to say that this uh, movement has evolved into a narco insurgency. So their their profits from narcotics now exceed their operating expenses, and we find that the leadership of the Taliban fight over the money, uh, and it's often divided along tribal lines. Uh, this um, they they uh, they make their money in in a, in a couple of ways. Uh, one is the narcotics trafficking. Second, illegal mining. Opium production in Afghanistan increased by 87% to a record level of 9000 metric tons in 2017 compared with 2016 levels according to a UN survey. UN Office on Drugs and Crime last week said the sudden increase in cultivation and production of the drug was profoundly alarming and could result in multiple challenges for Afghanistan. Myanmar's leader Aung San Suu Kyi on Tuesday said talks will be held this week with Bangladesh's foreign minister for repatriation of Rohingya refugees. Suu Kyi's government has faced heavy international criticism for its response to the crisis so far. Myanmar State Councillor Aung San Suu Kyi on Tuesday said she hopes talks with Bangladesh this week will result in a memorandum of understanding on the safe and voluntary return of Rohingya Muslims. While talking to reporters during Asia Europe meeting in Myanmar's capital Naypyidaw, Suu Kyi said as a responsibility her government will make sure human rights violations do not happen in her country. She however refused to comment whether violations took place in troubled Rakhine province or not. That's why we are going to be having bilateral discussions with your foreign minister tomorrow and the day after. And uh, we hope that this will result in an MOU being signed quickly which will enable us to start the safe and voluntary return of all those who have gone across the border. Over 600,000 Rohingyas have fled to Bangladesh and other neighboring countries since August following a military crackdown in Myanmar's Rakhine province. The military crackdown was prompted after a series of attacks by Rohingya insurgents on security posts. Myanmar intends to resettle most returning refugees in new model villages rather than on the land they previously occupied. In news from Nepal, the Election Commission of Nepal has completed printing of over 50 million ballot papers for the upcoming federal and provincial polls. The poll panel had started the printing process after the country's apex court on October 25th ordered it to ensure separate ballot papers for the two phases of the elections. Earlier, there were concerns whether the ballot papers will be printed on time or not due to time constraint. The poll panel said it had already dispatched all the ballot papers required for the first phase of polls to all the polling centers in 32 districts. The Himalayan country will witness federal and provincial polls on November 26th and December 7th. Heritage Week celebrations are ongoing in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province. Several events are being held as part of the celebrations aiming to generate awareness about preservation of the province's rich heritage among people 
Heritage Week celebrations are underway in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province to generate awareness about preservation of the valley's rich heritage among people. In one of the first events, Jammu and Kashmir's Education and Tourism Minister Priya Sethi visited Heritage Wadia Museum, country's second oldest geological museum in Jammu city. The museum boasts of large collections of early geological maps, rocks, fossils and an 11 foot long fossil tusk of a mammoth retrieved from hills of Kashmir Valley. जितने भी हमारे हेरिटेज मॉन्यूमेंट्स हैं, जितने भी हमारे हेरिटेज चीजें हैं, उनको इल्यूमिनेशन हो, उनके आ जो रख रखाव है, वो कैसे करें, रेस्टोरेशंस कैसे हो, और खासकर ये वेयरनेस जो है, जो सिविल सोसाइटी को या शायद हमारे बच्चों को भी नहीं है, तो वेयरनेस जो है लोगों तक जाए। Illumination of heritage sites, heritage walks and special cleanliness drives will be undertaken across the province as part of the celebrations. The celebration will conclude on November 25. The 48th India International Film Festival began in Panaji city of India's coastal Goa province on Monday. The nine-day event aims to promote films from all over the world and will see participation from 82 countries. The 48th International Film Festival of India or IFFI kick-started in Panaji city of India's coastal Goa province on Monday. The nine-day extravaganza was inaugurated by Bollywood actor Shah Rukh Khan. The festival will be presenting 195 films from over 82 countries of which there will be 10 world premieres, 10 Asian and international premieres as part of the event. Uh, opening ceremony is uh, FE 2017 ki, uh, and Goa is a great venue and all uh, participants who are from other countries and delegates I am and welcome to the country and I welcome to the country and I will be very romantic. It feels good, it feels great. I have been here earlier as the President of the Federation and Looking forward to this magnificent festival, the biggest festival in Asia, and I'm sure they'll put up a good show. Very confident. This year, the country of focus at IFFI is Canada. The festival will be celebrated with amidst the presence of noted Canadian film personalities. The festival will also celebrate the iconic spy James Bond by dedicating a section of the festival to him, wherein nine films featuring the popular character will be screened. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.